Hare Krishna everyone, welcome back to Shravanam Diaries podcast. I'm your host Sulalita Devi Dasi and today we are starting the book entitled Beyond Illusion and Doubt, also known as Dialectic Spiritualism, Vedic Views on Western Philosophies. Chapter 1 Socrates Socrates, 470-399 BC, was a thorn in the side of the leaders of ancient Athens, who saw him as a corrupter of young men. The problem was that he was uncompromising in his search for an objective understanding of such moral virtues as justice, courage and piety and he passed on the spirit to his students, most notably Plato. In the process, the leaders contended. He neglected the gods of the state. He taught all who would listen to engage in self-examination and tend to their souls. Even today, many have heard of Socrates' instruction to, in quotes, know thyself. But what does it mean? Here Srila Prabhupada explains that to really know the Self, one must know the Supreme Self, Krishna. Disciple, Disciple Socrates strongly opposed the Sophists, a group of speculators who taught that the standards of right and wrong and of truth and falsity were completely relative, being established solely by individual opinion or social convention. Socrates, on the other hand, seemed convinced that there was an absolute universal truth or good beyond mere speculation and opinion that could be known clearly and with certainty. Srila Prabhupada He was correct. For our part, we accept Krishna, God, as the supreme authority, the absolute truth. Krishna is by definition supreme perfection and philosophy is perfect when it is in harmony with him. This is our position. The philosophy of the Krishna consciousness movement is religious in the sense that it is concerned with carrying out the orders of God. That is the sum and substance of religion. It is not possible to manufacture a religion. In the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, manufactured religion is called Kaitava Dharma, just another form of cheating. Our basic principle is dharmam tu sakshat bhagavat pranitam. The word dharma refers to the orders given by God. And if we follow those orders, we are following dharma. An individual citizen cannot manufacture laws since laws are given by the government. Our perfection lies in following the orders of God sent per cent. Those who have no conception of God or his orders may manufacture religious systems, but our system is different. Disciple, the Socratic dialect, dialectic, the Socratic dialectic usually is sought to gradually arrive at an understanding of the essence of a particular moral virtue. For example, self-control, piety, courage or justice, by examining proposed definitions for completeness and consistency. 
Socrates wanted to establish more than just a list of universal definitions, however. He tried to show that any particular virtue, when understood in depth, was not different from all the others. The unity of the virtues thus implied the existence of a single absolute good. For Socrates, the goal of life is to rise by means of the intellect to a realization of this absolute good. A person who had attained such knowledge of the good would be self-realized in that he would always do the good without fail. A soul who had thus realized the good was said to be in a healthy or sound, sound state or to have attained wisdom. Socrates' name for the single absolute good was knowledge. Could one say that Socrates was a kind of Gyana yogi? Srila Prabhupada Socrates was a muni, a great thinker. However, the, the real truth comes to such a muni after many, many births. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita 7.19 Bahunam janmanam ante gyanavan mam prapadyante vasudeva sarvam iti samahatma sudurlaba Quote, after many births and deaths one who is actually in knowledge surrenders unto me, knowing me to be the cause of all causes and all that is. Such a great soul is very rare. Unquote. People like Socrates are known as Gyanavan, wise men, and after many births they surrender themselves to Krishna. They do not do so blindly, but knowing that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the source of everything. However, this process of self-searching for knowledge takes time. If we take the instructions of Krishna directly and surrender unto Him, we save time and many, many births. Disciple. Socrates terms his method meiotic, that is, like that of a midwife. He thought that a soul could not really come to knowledge of the good by the imposition of inf information from an external source. Rather, such knowledge had to be awakened within the soul itself. The teacher's business is to direct, encourage, and prod a soul until it gives birth to the truth. The Mayutic method, therefore, suggests that since the soul is able to bring the truth out of itself, knowledge is really a kind of recollection or remembrance. If so, then there must have been a previous life in which the soul possessed the knowledge it has forgotten. This suggests, then, that the soul, understood as something involving intelligence and memory, exists continuously through many lifetimes and indeed is eternal. Srila Prabhupada Yes! The soul is eternal, and because the soul is eternal, the intelligence, mind, and senses are also eternal. However, they are all now covered by a material coating, which must be cleansed. Once this material coating is washed away, the real mind, intelligence, and senses will emerge. That is stated in the Narada Pancharatra. 
tat paratvena nirmalam. The purificatory process takes place when one is in touch with the transcendental, loving service of the Lord and is chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Chetudarpanamarjanam One must cleanse the heart. All misconceptions come from misunderstanding one's real nature and one's relationship with God. We are all part and parcel of God, yet somehow or other we have forgotten this. Previously we rendered service to God, but now we are rendering service to something illusory. This is Maya. Whether we are liberated or conditioned, our constitutional position is to render service. In the material world, we work according to our different capacities, as a politician, a thinker, a poet, or whatever. But if we are disconnected from Krishna, all of this is Maya. When we perform our duty in order to develop Krishna consciousness, our duty enables liberation from this bondage. Disciple It is interesting that nowadays we find the kind of relativism taught by the sophists to be again very widespread. Quote, if you believe it, then it's true for you. Unquote. Socrates took up the task of vigorously combating this position, trying to demonstrate by strong arguments that there must be an absolute truth that is distinguishable from the relative and that must be carried categorically acknowledged by everyone. Srila Prabhupada that is what we are also doing. The absolute truth is true for everyone, and the relative truth is relative to a particular position. The relative truth depends on the absolute truth, which is the summum bonum. God is the absolute truth, and the material world is relative truth. Because the material world is God's energy, it appears to be real or true, just as the reflection of the sun in water emits some light. But that reflection is not independent of the sun, and as soon as the sun sets, that light will disappear the absolute truth is Krishna, and this cosmos is relative truth, a manifestation of Krishna's external energy. If Krishna withdrew his energy, the cosmos would not exist. In another sense, Krishna and Krishna's energy are not different. We cannot separate heat from fire. Heat is also fire, yet heat is not fire. This is the position of relative truth. As soon as we experience heat, we understand that there is fire. Yet we cannot say that heat is fire. Relative truth is like heat, because it stands on the strength of the absolute truth, just as heat stands on the strength of fire. Because the absolute is true, relative truth also appears to be true, although it has no independent existence. A mirage appears to be water, because in actuality 
there is such a thing as water. Similarly, this material world appears attractive because there is actually an all-attractive spiritual world. Disciple Socrates held that the highest duty of man was to care for his soul, that is, to cultivate that healthy state of soul which is true knowledge, the attainment of the good. When a man becomes fixed in such knowledge, he will, as a matter of course, act correctly in all affairs. He will be beyond the dictates of the passions, and he will remain peaceful and undisturbed in every circumstance. Socrates himself seems to have attained such a state as his own behavior at the time of his death illustrates. He calmly drank the poison hemlock ra rather than give up his principles. He seems to have realized knowledge of at least some aspect of the absolute truth, although we must add that he never spoke of it as a person or gave it a personal name. Srila Prabhupada that is the preliminary stage of understanding the Absolute, known as Brahman Realization, realization of the impersonal feature. One who advances further attains Paramatma Realization, realization of the localized feature, whereby one realizes that God is everywhere. It is a fact that God is everywhere, but at the same time God has his own abode. Galoka eva nivasyatya khilatma bhuta God is a person and he has his own, his own abode and associates. Although he is in his abode, he is present everywhere, within every atom. Andantarastha paramano chayantarastham Like other impersonalists, Socrates cannot understand how God, through his potency, can remain in his own abode and simultaneously be present in every atom. The material world is his expansion, his energy. Bhumir apo nalovayu kammano budhir evacha. Because his energy is expanded everywhere, he can be present everywhere. Although the energy and the energetic are non different, we cannot say that they are not distinct, they are simultaneously one and different. This is the perfect philosophy of Achintya Bheda Bheda Tattva. Inconceivable, simultaneous oneness and difference. Jai. I think we will stop here for today. We shall continue tomorrow. Thank you so much for tuning in. The link to this book will be up tomorrow. And we shall see you next time. Hare Krishna.